In this crazy world, there has only been two things that I've been able to count on. And that has been my connection with the divine and my heart's knowing. And this year has tested everything collectively that we've perceived to know. It's been shaking us to our core to bring us back to our center. Just as if we would shake a tree, leaving only the living leaves left standing firmly on the branches. We too are being pruned of our dysfunction within and without us. This leaves us feeling as if we have nothing left to stand upon as the faulty foundation collapses and crumbles. Now I'm starting to feel as if if my heart is wrong, then my guidance from the divine must be wrong as well. I've had everything that I thought I knew challenged and tested, and I'm finding out that I've put my own self through all of this hellish pain that I've gone through for the last 10 years for absolutely no reason. And that reality, that truth, ugh, that was a devastating experience to realize there's no one to blame but your choice to choose fear instead of love, to choose the hard way versus the easy way, to surrender your will, your ego's will, to the guidance and the service of the divine will, God's will, to be done through you, bringing those pillars of heaven to earth. This woman that awoke this truth within me over 10 years ago. I've kept in contact with her, or I did keep in contact with her until about 2012 was the last time I saw her in person. And this knowing of, I came here to teach the dance of life, to help or to awaken the divine goddess. When I woke up to this knowledge I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what it felt like. I could see it, but me not being a mother, I mean, I can say that I was kind of born a mother, but my daughter's first breath and her, my entire life changed that day for the better. And my daughter has been She is my guide. She is my guide in every sense of the way. She's definitely my spiritual guide. And um, so I don't feel that the last 10 years have been a mistake or that I wasn't supposed to have her. I just feel that because I've had this belief system and I've continued to choose the hard way that I don't see the signs and the symbols and the knowledge that is right in front of me because I'm searching for my will to manifest through this little tiny space when the universe sees so much more for all of us. And the reason why I brought up this whole story and why it was making me sad was because I've been, since 2012, I've been looking for this woman And I went through this process, I think that the majority of us do, where it's like, you know yourself, and then you're born, and then you lose yourself, and then you have to find yourself, and then you wake up to the truth of you. And I feel like as I've woke up to my spiritual truth or my I want to say God, self, I don't know, my my soul, my, my knowing 
that existed before this body, you know, because this, this body is just a vessel through which we manifest our creation and our light through. It's merely a tool. I feel like when I didn't know, there was a lot of people around me that were so excited for me to find out. But then as I started to know, people, basically the outside has gotten a lot smaller and I've had to learn how to trust the, when I get myself out of the way and I ask and that knowing comes in in the center of my being of this truth vibration. It's It's been this, this process of, of just allowing for that listening and knowing of truth instead of searching for the outside to validate the truth. And I even went to Sedona, as most of you know, and subconsciously I was looking for her. And um, here this woman that woke me up to my spiritual truth, she, yeah, so much, um, gave me permission to have my daughter, as weird as that sounds. Um, here she was right in front of me on a program that we've, uh, that I've been participating in since April. Here she was on that program and because I was distracted by trying to manifest my will. I wasn't even watching the day she was on. I found out she passed away from cancer. And uh, I, because I didn't remember her name, I remembered her name was Nancy, but for some reason, I didn't remember her last name. And I also always felt like her name didn't match, like, her, the energy that I remembered her as. And when my friend, who is one of the hosts, was talking about her and she started saying that she went with her to the south of France, it started to click and I was like, oh my gosh. And so we had the recording from when she interviewed her and I went back and I watched it and... Yeah, that set this whole process into motion because it's just, yeah. I don't know, I haven't really gotten to the conclusion of all of this, but I was guided to share with you all and I want to send so much love and gratitude to Nancy's family and everyone that has ever been on my path that has helped to guide me in, in I want to say in the right direction, but that's not the right words. That's stood in front of me when I've been going and away from my truth or away from my higher self and, and just stood there until I turned back around and just reminded me of who I was. I pray that we get to the fun part and the co-creation and the coming back together really, really soon, but I'm going to be mindfully in the present moment surrendering my ego's will several times a day it seems like um but I love you all so very much and you can take this story and relate it into your own life and know that we're all in this together and every moment we always have a choice to love or fear come together to separate. And it's always our choice to choose. But God and the divine 
it's not punishing us every time we make the wrong quote unquote choice. It's always just presently guiding us. It's not shaking its head and judging us every time we choose the hard way. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that I'm learning is that no almighty God is, 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 is shaking their finger and their head just so shamefully disappointed in us. No. Shame was something that the ego created the moment that it felt rejection and that shame started to infect us all. It's that fear that created that perception of separation that triggered us to go into shame that signaled our consciousness into fragmentation that has created death and that is the biggest virus and infection that we need to be mindfully pruning from our human reality coming back to a state of wholeness to the truth of our divinity this is Kendra the Divine Purpose Mentor you guys can reach me at Kendra Divine Purpose Mentor.com I love you all have a good night coming back to a state of wholeness to the truth of our divinity coming back to a state of wholeness the truth of our divinity